Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome to this Sunday's video. We've been doing quite a bit of short distance traveling lately, basically just to visit Ben. He's out of town training for a new job, which is pretty exciting for him and for us. We talked about this when we went on our last little weekend trip. Uh, about how I stay carnivore while I'm traveling and some of the prep that I do in order to bring things along with us. And since that's just kind of been part of our lifestyle more lately, I want to talk a little bit more about that and connecting back to our why, because our why is something that we talk about a lot in this community. You know, why are you doing the carnivore diet? Why are you wanting to heal? What are exactly are you wanting to heal from? Why are the sacrifices that you have to make in order to eat this way worth it to you for, for a long-term span of time in order to get the results? And how are you going to deal with different situations as they come up that are challenging? And one of those challenges is traveling and so I really have gotten a lot of opportunities to practice my strategies and my mindsets going into traveling and preparing ahead of time lately and so I thought I would share with you today what I made um, to prepare to go on the last trip that we went on and I'm also going to show you some clips of the Renaissance Festival because we had bought tickets to go to the Renaissance Festival without realizing that it was actually like a three and a half hour drive from where we live but the place that Ben is staying for his training is significantly closer so we thought we'll go visit him and then we'll bop on over to the Renaissance Festival this weekend as kind of our intro into fall and Halloween activities and that was really fun. It actually turned out to be really cold that night and so we didn't stay for a very long time but we got to walk around the whole entire fair and just kind of explore and see what it's about and then next year we'll probably plan a little bit better and maybe camp or stay somewhere close so that we can go for an entire weekend but Illy and I were matching we were butterfly fairies and so we had our little costumes and it was so much fun we flew around flapping our wings like butterflies all around the renaissance festival and um it was great and Ben had his costume too he was kind of a, a wizard character and so we had a lot of fun and there was a lot of carnivore options to eat there which i knew i knew there had to be turkey legs but i was kind of surprised there was quite a few other really delicious appetizing options for us meat only people there so i spent an afternoon just kind of preparing some snacks to take in the car with us because we were going to be in the car quite a bit driving to the place where ben is and then driving to the renaissance festival and driving back and then driving back again and so i wanted to have some just easy available snack items so i did some boiled eggs which my little one is actually really liking lately and i just threw in a, a bag of portioned out ground beef and i kind of make these little lazy burger bites as i call them they're not really formal patty shapes they're just kind of however i chop them up as they cook and lightly salted those are really good just easy snacks they're good cold i like to just throw them in the cooler in the car and take them wherever we're going and then I also made some steak jerky, which turned out absolutely freaking delicious. I ate the whole package of the steak jerky on the way down without even thinking about it. It was so good. So I'm going to have to make more because Ben didn't even get to try it. But the steak jerky was really easy to make in the dehydrator. I had gotten some boneless New York strips on sale for, I believe they were $4.99 a pound at one of the local stores here. I think it was the Tom Thumb near us and that was a crazy deal so i bought two big packs of those steaks and i had some in the freezer which i brought to cook at the airbnb and then these other two that i had aging in the fridge i took that that tip from dr chafee and i put them on a cookie sheet and just um, salt them on all sides and then like let them sit out in the fridge they kind of dry out they start to form their own little crust and that i think was what made this jerky so phenomenal. So I cut off the edges that were the, you know, heavy fatty chunks and any of the major gristly pieces just to try to get them a little bit more lean for the dehydrator. But these were pretty marbled. They had quite a bit of fat in them and I just throw them on there because I know they're going to be eaten basically immediately at this point and so I'm not worried about them going rancid or anything weird about the fat. 
I'm telling you, they're so, it's so good. I think I threw them in the freezer for like maybe 10 minutes before I sliced them up just to try to firm up the meat a little bit. I don't know if that made much of a difference on the slice thinness that I was able to get, but I was pretty happy overall with it. So I just threw those in the dehydrator. I think it was about mm, maybe eight hours, 10 hours, and they were to the consistency that I like. They, I don't like my jerky to get super, super, super dry. I like it to be a little bit chewy. It was just chewy enough to be really comfortable to eat, very lightly salted. I felt like they didn't need very much salt to bring out the flavor. And this saves so much money, guys. Do you ever stop at a gas station and try to find some jerky? And 100% of the time, it's always got some type of sweetener, some type of soy usually in it, some type of like filler, protein additive to some degree like there's always something funky in it even if you can find an original it's usually still sweetened and I don't like the texture of of a lot of jerky that, that's just so hard that you kind of just have to like it hurts your jaw to like tear it apart and everything gets stuck in your teeth and it's just like not very good and it's expensive so this is such a great way I'm just like in love with my dehydrator lately to pick up whatever meats you find on sale, maybe even cuts that you wouldn't really wanna put into your meal plan for that week. Or like in my case, if I had kind of too many steaks for the moment and I wanted to use up some stuff before I left for a trip, I'm just dehydrating all of it and then it can just be sitting in the car for a snack and it all gets eaten. And so I, I'm all about jerky right now <laughs> and it's so easy to make. And then I just pulled out some stuff from my freezer that I wanted to bring along to cook at the Airbnb since I was gonna have access to like a regular kitchen so that I'd be able to make healthy meals for us instead of having to go out and shop a lot or order out food or go out to eat a lot, which we try to avoid. We do like to eat out every once in a while, usually when we're in a new place, cause you know, my fiance is a chef and a sushi chef. And so we usually like to get sushi somewhere or try something out. But I definitely don't wanna be relying on eating out as the majority of our, our travel time meals. And so I brought along a nice big chuck roast. I made a really big roast and I added some, carrots and onions and garlic because that was what I was going to make to leave Ben uh, to have in the fridge after we were gone. And he does enjoy having some vegetables added into his uh, meals sometimes. And so I made that big chuck roast kind of beef stew for him. And then I brought three steaks, which I have found that I really enjoy cutting up into like kind of steak bites, similar to how I do the burger patties, which are smaller and kind of to each their own type of shape. I like to slice up my steaks. That way, if I feel like I can't eat a whole steak, then I can cook a couple of bites, a couple of portions of steak at a time. And then I don't feel like I'm wasting because I really don't like leftover steak. I don't like steak cold. I really prefer it like freshly cooked. And so that allows me to kind of gauge better how much I wanna eat. And then for the other members of my family, it's a little bit easier to slice them up and again, kind of just eat what you're hungry for at the time. And then the rest can be saved for snacks. It's interesting to me how easy it is to forget how bad you felt when you start feeling good. And I think this has a lot to do with why it's easy to slip off the wagon sometimes when you're feeling good and you're having fun and everything's happy and good. It's easy to say, oh, well, you know what? A little piece of funnel cake's okay, or a little bit of this sweetened beverage is okay. Your why, the reason that you started out doing this kind of becomes a distant memory. The motivation and the passion behind that reasoning sort of is muffled in these happy, fun, joyous times that we're, that we're experiencing. And that can be kind of difficult. And I've definitely noticed those type of situations happening for me during my journey. And so how do you connect to your why during those times and remind yourself to stay the course even when you're feeling good and you've started to heal and you're in remission perhaps from some of the things that you were looking to heal from via this way of eating. And I think 
The old saying that where there's a will, there's a way is very powerful. But if we replace the will part with the why part, I think that can help us integrate that motivation and passion that came from the reasoning of our why that we started out with into the way that we're living our life, even when things are good, because we want things to be good, right? We want to feel good. We want to continue to feel better. And as a mom, I want to continue to model good behavior and good nutrition choices for my child, even in the sort of fun cultural moments that we're participating in, like when we were at the Renaissance Festival or throughout the upcoming holidays. And so where there's a why, there's a way. There's a way to remember what you've been through, even when you're feeling good, without bringing your vibration down, without living in the past, or without bringing back any of that fear or anxiety or pain that you've suffered previously. There's a healthy way to reflect on the journey that you've been through in times where you're feeling good, but you just want to remember, hey, why does it really matter that I don't just have a bite of this right now? Why does it really matter that I don't take this weekend off and kind of go off plan when, when I really know that I shouldn't do that at this point in my life? And I do this by remembering the most recent times when I have fallen off the wagon or I have eaten off plan and how I felt about that. Because the most recent times I've been approaching those mistakes, so to speak, a little bit differently. And I haven't been beating myself up anymore. I've been giving myself grace and saying, okay, you know what? I slipped up a little bit here, but I'm just gonna kind of pretend like it didn't happen. Just jump right back on and just keep moving forward. I try to just integrate that feeling of, hey, you know what? This really did have an effect on me in a way that's not so negative that it's causing me to kind of cycle back into that self-sabotage realm that I spent a lot of time in uh, before I really found a dietary solution for a lot of my problems. There's a way to prepare and set yourself up to be as successful as possible when your why is very strong. And that's where the meal prep comes in and the preparing for travel and spending that time setting yourself up and getting into the mindset of, okay, I'm going to be presented with a lot of stimulus that I'm not used to in my life. There's going to be different foods. There's going to be different smells. There's going to be people, you know, drinking alcohol and, and eating funnel cake and dancing around and having a good time. And that's going to be most likely appealing to me because that is a place that I've lived before and so what am I going to do how am I going to react to that and just kind of coaching yourself through a couple of scenarios that you expect to encounter in an event or a gathering or a place that you're going and just kind of role play that a little bit and practice hey how am I going to think about this what am I going to tell myself in that moment that's going to encourage me in a way that's positive again we're not trying to drag ourselves back into negativity but Sometimes we do need that reminder. And for some of us, and at different points in our journey, there is a way to incorporate our why in a way that we can allow a little bit of compromise sometimes. We can allow maybe a bite of this or a sip of that or something if we feel like we have the strength and the will to indulge a little bit in something without completely going off the rails. And so this is where self-awareness and really knowing yourself and where you're at and being very honest with yourself about that is so important because I think sometimes we can create these false expectations for ourselves about how confident we might be in certain situations until we actually get there and we realize, hey, maybe I'm not ready for this, but I tried to allow it in because of the nostalgia, because of the, the people that were there, because of how good I was feeling. And we forget, right, how easy it is to go back to the place where we're not feeling so good. So having a strong why to remind yourself of is so important, but then the application of that is the will and that creates the way. And this is just a learning experience for all of us. All of us are on you know, our own individual paths and at different points we can handle different things. And so that's what traveling and you know, going to some of these fun events has really taught me lately is that planning and preparation does pay off. It sets me up for these slightly more challenging situations 
in a place of confidence, in a place of connectedness with why I'm doing this. And I'm actually really looking forward to the holidays this year. I'm not kind of dreading it like I have in years past when I've had health goals and been really trying to stick to a plan because uh, I think creativity and goal setting and planning and communication and collaboration and connectedness with other like-minded people is such a great way to stay on track and to be inspired and to inspire others. And so I've been trying to incorporate all that stuff this year and I'm really excited to do the holidays carnivore, animal-based for my family and still participate in all the fun fall stuff and Christmas stuff that's coming up. Let me know how you guys are doing in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have planned for the holidays and how you're navigating through this season and and what your solutions are for your individual goals and journey so thank you so much for watching we'll see you on wednesday for thanksgiving dinner so stay tuned for that i'm super excited to post that take care everybody